Glad you're here at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, home of the Reds since 2003. MLB The Show has action out of the NL Central. It's the Pittsburgh Pirates going up against the Cincinnati Reds. Along with my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Shami. So the Pittsburgh Pirates have a chance to get out of town with a series sweep, and that's big against a division rival. Yeah, they want to walk out of here feeling really good about what they've done. And sweeps are good, but divisional sweeps are outstanding, especially on the road. They're going to get a tough game from the other side, though, and no one's okay with getting swept in their own building, so they'll be ready as well. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Just about set to go now. On the mound for the Reds, Luis Castillo. What do you got on him, Chris? Boogie pitched into the seventh, earned the W in his last start. He really needed that one. Well, this team needs another one today. We'll see if he can carry that performance into this game. So just about set. Here's the veteran shortstop, Hannes Wagner. The 1-1. One, one. Just missed. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. The two on. Ripped on a line. Done. Makes the catch. One down. We take a check of the Pirates lineup put together by manager Derek Shelton. And a big part of it, a guy with a great track record, Jason Bay. Ah, Boog, what a great talent. I mean, the kind of player who can dominate a game at times, be a perennial all-star. <laughs> It's going to take home some hardware as well. I mean, he's one of the best in the game today and always fun to watch. The wind of the pitch. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And there's two down. This guy will throw any pitch in any count. Three, two. He goes off speed. Batting gets third. the out. The right fielder, number 21, Roberto Clemente. Roberto Clemente, the next Pirate to hit. Two hits in the game last night. Bounce to the left side. And foul ball. There's so much Clemente can do with the plate and in the field. But why the kick the pitch? Yeah, the one-two misses to even the count. About the only thing Clemente didn't have was elite speed. But the other four tools were as strong as anyone's in the game. Base hit, left center field. Pitch was in and off the plate. So that hard to do anything with the, the pitch in that location, but somehow he got the barrel to it and hit it well. Pretty amazing. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. And yeah, the batter now, Ralph Kiner. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. Next offering is in for a strike. Roberto's number one tool had to be his rocket arm. The bat's not far behind, though. Tremendous opposite field power. Kicks and deals. And that's downstairs and outside. Two now. In the air, right field. Pretty well struck. That one back there. And it's gone. He sends one out the opposite way, and it gives him the lead in the first. It's 2 nothing. There was a fastball down the middle. I don't think the hitter recognized the pitch, but once he did, was quick enough to get it in play with some authority. He got that up and out of here. Stepping in, Willie Stargell. Big time power. Lined, and that's a base hit. Joey gets on base and keeps it going. 
All over that one right there. I could watch base hits like that one all day long, and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive into center field. Dave Parker now at the plate. Two for ten in the series. The one-one. And that one wrapped foul. And a pitch. Foul ball. Next offering is fouled back. Swag and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Another look at this two run homer for Pittsburgh. It's now a two nothing ball game. Bottom of the first, our starting pitcher in this one, Zach Thompson. Last time out, it just seemed like he wasn't trusting his stuff. He fell behind in the count, walked a number of guys. Today, he's got to pitch aggressively, and he's got to pitch inside. We go to the bottom of the first, and now the shortstop, Barry Larkin. The pitch. Clemente gliding to his left. Makes the grab, one down. Here's the lineup for the Reds. And a key factor for this club in that leadoff spot, Barry Larkin. Yeah, definitely someone I always enjoy, you know, when I get a chance to watch him, whether he's hitting a game or even taking swings during batting practice. Man, this guy is always so focused on what he's doing on that task at hand. He's got so much attention to detail that when he steps in the box, his success rate is really high. Swing and a miss, and now two and two. Thompson, he isn't really known as the starting pitcher that's going to get you deep into the start. It's not that he's not capable, he just hasn't proven that he can do it yet. One down, base is empty. And down on strikes he goes, and there are two outs. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically, he likes to shoot the ball the other way. But that time, a little anxious. Joe Morgan. Two outs, bases empty. Joe Morgan, the next to hit for the Reds. Next offering finds the zone, and the count is full. He's got such great stuff. You just don't know from start to start whether it's a potential no-hitter or it's a guy that's only going to give you three or four innings. Three-two on the way. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Look out. That ball was smoked. Man, I am so relieved that they have this netting down the lines just ensure safety for the fans last thing is a player you want to look up and see a fan get hit in the air center field bay settles underneath it and he makes the catch and that will end the inning we move to the second here in cincinnati it's the pirates two and the reds nothing second inning set to go at the play jason bay I mean, these guys know they have to get going out of the gates, but you're not going to hear a skipper. You're not going to hear people really say that. And one and two. But for the most part, with that kind of stuff, you expect him to get to the middle of the ball game. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. Leadoff man retired here in the second. And now, Jason Kendall. This guy has turned into a beast. Kendall. 
In the air, left field, done under this one. He makes the catch, and there's two down. And what about analytics? Because one of the ways it seems like they've contributed to the trend is it's not just about are you capable of getting deep, that now focusing on the numbers, maybe the matchup is better with a different guy as the game goes on. The wind and the pitch. Good eye right there. Only a handful of pitchers can go through an order three times, maybe even four times, and the analytics have contributed to that trend, but I think there are some guys given an opportunity. Well, going to pause on that thought, as that'll do it for the inning. Bucks go down quietly. They're up 2 nothing. Back here in Cincinnati, here's the veteran first baseman, Tony Perez. Singing, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon, the way he prepares and gets ready for the ball game. I tell you what, his teammates feed off of the leadership that he shows on and off the field. Got him. And one out now. Well, he didn't get the call on the mound the pitch before. Felt like he should have had him looking, I think. But, you know, that's good composure right there. He found a way to come back with another good pitch to get him to swing and miss. Next for Cincinnati, Johnny Bench. Righty delivers. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Next pitch is downstairs. That one hammered left field back there. Makes the catch up against the wall. Batting six. The left fielder, Adam. In now for the Reds, Adam Dunn. And a 1 1. Hey. Nowadays, with advanced metrics and aggressive defensive shifting, defense isn't necessarily just about making errors. Are you able to get to balls? Are you able to fill spots where guys hit the ball? And a swing and a miss. And that's that. And 1 2 3 go the Reds. And they're down 2 0. Out of the third inning, and stepping in is the speedy Hannes Wagner. And an area that goes unnoticed is the coach that's responsible for positioning and then uh, the research person that's providing the information. So what we're seeing in baseball, so many more people behind the scenes that are contributing to the success between the lines. Brings it in with a nice running grab. And there's one down. The third baseman, number 13, Key Brian Hayes. Now batting Key Brian Hayes. Back when you played, it wasn't the empirical data we have now. It was a guy with a ruler and a diamond taking a colored pencil and drawing a line where he thought someone had hit the ball, right? <laughs> That or just going off of gut or feel. What does it look like his swing is today? What's the pitcher throwing? They are sticking to the metrics and what seems to be most consistent for that hitter, regardless of who the pitcher is on the mound. And here is Roberto Clemente. 
a guy who makes an impact not just at the plate but also in the field next offering upstairs Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That's out number two. Met at first at the plate for Pittsburgh. Ralph Kiner. Really good piece of hitting last time going to the opposite field. And the righty deals. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. His second of the year, and they tack on to their lead. It's 4 0. That slider on the outside part of the plate is typically hit the other way, but to be able to get to it, pull the baseball, and get it up in the air for a home run. I'm just really impressed. Here's some real power at the plate. Willie Stargell. The 1-1. One -one. That's inside. With how good these offenses are, there's a lot of ball game left. The pitch. And downstairs. If you're trying to come up with the ideal clubhouse presence and team leader, Willie Stargell pops probably the best you could possibly do. Swing and a bouncer. Whips it to first on the run. And that's the third out. Cannonball coming. It's now a 4-0 ball game. Set for the bottom of the third. Now here is Joey Votto. The Reds in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the leadoff, man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. And you talk about Stargell's leadership. I don't think there's ever been a more close-knit team than that pirate squad of the late 70s. And he was the heart of that team. Remember that team's theme that. song, Sister Sledge, We Are Family? And a 2-1 on the way. They say it went. Stars were brought home the title for the Pirates in 1979, and it was more than just his leadership. Listen, in 79, he won the National League MVP, the NLCS MVP, and the World Series MVP. That's a huge season and one for the ages. Next pitch misses, and now it's 3-2. and two. The 3-2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Got a great back and forth, and that at bat. He had to lay off some really close pitches, and somehow, Boogie, found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. pitch inside oh, just game. missed the 2-1 swing and a slow roller one at second and it's a double play
batting none. The right fielder, Tyler Naquin. Two outs, base is empty. Tyler Naquin, the next to hit for the Reds. Next offering is fouled back. Here comes a pitch. Swings and misses. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and miss, and you walk off the field. And welcome back. Out of the fourth to the plate now for Pittsburgh is the DH. Dave Parker. When he steps into the batter's box, the comfort level looks so high. It doesn't matter what kind of delivery that pitcher has, what kind of velocity, what kind of secondary stuff. He is so settled in there, he owns the home plate area. Well, he hasn't quite settled in out there. Four runs and in three innings. He's going to have to have some quick one, two, three innings to pitch deep into this ballgame. On the ground to short. Fires over to first. One up, one down. Now batting the center fielder, Jason Bay. Now the batter now, Jason Bay. Right hander kicks deals. And that one is lifted in the air. And a couple of quick outs. Now batting. Catcher. Jason Kendall. Here's the catcher to hit. Jason Kendall. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has... Maybe above average. Ah, the throw in time to get him, and that does it for the inning. To the bottom of inning number four now. It's the Pirates four, and the Reds nothing. Ready to go, bottom four. And the batter will be the shortstop, Barry Larkin. At the belt and fires. That one the other way. Base hit into right field. And the leadoff man aboard. The center fielder, number 44. So, man aboard and ready to hit now for Cincinnati. Eric Davis. Good power. Not great in the OBP department. Over to first, and he's safe. Here's a 1 1. Ball. And a foul ball. Rudder at first with no outs here. Ground ball right side could be two. Can't field it cleanly, but he wins the foot race to first. Good job of knowing how much time he had there. Well, that was clearly a double play ball, but the Second bobble unfortunately end. prevented him from being able to get two. But a good oh, job yeah. to stay with it and make sure you got at least one. Next for Cincinnati, Joe Morgan. Singy, he's got a history of coming through in the big spots. I know I like to talk about I'm not sure where their clutch actually exists, but you look at the numbers, and this guy always seems to deliver in no spots. Man, it's second. And he walked him. He's making things difficult for himself right now out there on the mound, but, you know, his confidence should still be high enough to get out of this, but he's going to have to buckle down right here. First and second, one out. And here's the first baseman, Tony Perez. 
The one two. And that misses off the outside edge. Well, I think it's the ability to assess the situation, understanding what the pitcher has, what he's trying to get people out on, and then being able to use the entire field. And a pitch. In the dirt, and the count is filled up. And the right-hander deals. Here's a high chopper. To first, and he beats it. Everyone's safe. Protecting with strikes on him. And putting the ball in play speaks to cutting down the strikeouts, shortening up with two strikes. Here's the Reds catcher, Johnny Bench. This guy is one of the best athletes in the sport. Next offering in the dirt. And the count is two and two. And that chance handled. He comes home with it. On the first double play. And that's the inning. Just trying to sneak one through with the bases loaded, but an excellent job by the defense to turn that one and get out of this jam. Back here at the ballpark, leading off, Bill Mazeroski. One and two now. There Tried to check his swing there. Now it appealed to first. No swing. And a pitch. And now the count filled up three and two. Three, two. Stays alive. And here it comes. Out there to center. Davis makes his way towards it. Grabs it on the run. And there's one away. Now batter. The shortstop. Thomas Wagner. So the Pirates batting order turns over. Hannes Wagner, the next Pirate to hit. Next offering upstairs. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. A right-hander is up and throwing. The wind of the pitch. That one blasted deep to right. That's back. Can't get their base hit. Not stopping. He's going for three. The relay. Save. Well, here we are. Third time through the order. And this is where we see the OPS jump up. Manager might have to go to the bullpen a little bit sooner than he anticipated. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Luis Castillo won't go any further. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound. New pitcher for the Reds, number 43. And little room for error with a runner on third. Oh, he's having an excellent season so far. ERA is under two. A lot of flexibility coming out of the bullpen. Key Brian Hayes, the next pirate to hit. Good contact guy, good defender. The pitch. And a foul ball, he stays alive.
the 2-2. Two -two. That's down and in. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. Runner on at third, one gone. That one ripped. Done. Makes the grab. Runner tags for home. Runner in from third to extend their lead. It's 5 nothing. Now batter, the right fielder, Roberto Clemente. And now here is Roberto Clemente. This is a true five-tool guy. Not very many of them out there, but when he's on the field, you can't take your eye off of him. Here's a 1-1. One -one. Fans come to the ballpark to watch him play. And in baseball, to have such a talented player going out there every day and putting on the show that he does, just a joy to watch. On the run, throw to first, and that'll do it. Last half of the fifth coming up. It's the Pirates five and the Reds nothing. Back here at Great American Ballpark, we head to the bottom of the fifth. Now the left fielder, Adam Dunn. Hits for average power. The ability to feel the arm and then the speed, really impressive. And the pitch. Activity in Pittsburgh's bullpen. Heath Hembry loosening up in case he's called upon by Derek Shelton. Peters, the lefty, warming up as well. And that one handled. Over to first. And that's the first out in the bottom of the fifth. The batter, the designated hitter, Joey Votto. And the batter now is Joey Votto. Two for nine so far in the series. Next offering is fouled back. Two two. And it's fouled away. Righty to the plate. Cut on and miss. Struck him out. Out number two. Good pitch right there. I mean, he's attacking a location that this guy at the now plate batting. tends to have trouble Third with. And there's just Red so there. much information in this day Glory. and age. Sometimes too much information. But the guys that can take that information, process it, and then go out there, Boog, and execute the pitch, go right after that hitter, and get the result that they were anticipating, that's really good pitching right there. And it's a good job of the pitcher and the catcher. Now this ball is well hit. This one's got a chance. And that one is out of here. An absolute blast to left. His first homer of the year, it's 5-1. Put a really nice swing on that one, and everything was on time. Took a direct path to the ball. Excellent extension, and just drove it out of here. Nothing better than when the ball jumps off your bat like that.
two outs, nobody on. Tyler Naquin to the plate. His first at bat was a strikeout. Swing and a miss. Two and two. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Two outs. Stays alive. Next offering upstairs. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. That ends the inning. Reds claw back with this homer. It's now 5-1. Up next for the Pirates, Ralph Kiner. And the way he's going in this one, we've been waiting for his spot to come around again. All right, listen, everyone. Stop what you're doing right now. This guy's got two home runs already. Now he's going for number three. Hey. Next offering is in for a strike. And a one two. Liner snagged it first. Now the first and now the first baseman, Willie Stargell. With this kind of lead, he can swing freely, try to hit the ball out of the park, do what he loves to do. The count two and one. And he flips a breaking ball in there or a changeup. Either one. <laughs> Something off speed. Good arm action on it. Whatever it was. The punch out there. Two away. Oh, just a beautiful fastball on the inside corner for that backwards K right there. I think the hitter saw it all the way coming from that opposite arm angle. So I got to think he was looking away and just got locked up by the hard stuff boring in on his hands. Dave Parker, the next to hit. Two down, nobody on. And a count one and two. The pitch. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Flew open a little bit with that front shoulder, but was able to slow his back down just enough to make contact with that pitch. Keep the bat alive. Lifted in the air, out to left. Dunn makes the catch, and that'll do it. Top of the order, due up in the home half of the six. It's the Pirates five, and the Reds one. Back now for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Heath Hembry. He's making his fourth appearance of the season. Well, at this point of the ball game, we're talking about middle innings, and he need a little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. Welcome back. Now it's the shortstop, Barry Larkin. And the 3-1. That's a hit. Off to a good start with a leadoff nod. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. And you can feel this crowd waking up a bit here as the guys are starting to make some noise with their bats. And now it's going to be Eric Davis.
Late swing fouled off. And he deals. Ball, that's if you're on the mound right now, you know you have to retire this hitter. If he gets on base, it could open up the floodgates for this offense to score some runs. Next pitch has popped up. Stargell makes the catch, and there's one away. Now back, second baseman, Joe Morgan. In now for the Reds, Joe Morgan with three hits so far in the series, and he's knocked in three runs as well. Larkin leads off first with one away. Next offering is in for a strike. This is one of those situations defensively where you can't try to do too much. You've got to make sure that you field the ball cleanly and get one out first. It's going to be tough to get two with this kind of speed in the batter's box. Right-handed reliever. Down and in, moved his feet. Now all leave it up. Stays alive. The 2 2. That one missing inside. And the pitch. Got him looking. Two gone. Oh, that's almost just not fair with that pitch. I mean, until the very last second, looked like it was going to be well in off the plate, but the arm side run brought it right back to catch the inside corner. Tell you what, frustrating as a hitter, you give up on the pitch. I honestly don't know what you're supposed to do with that as a hitter other than just tip your cap as you walk back to the dugout. Now move to first. Larkin back on a dive. And here is Tony Perez. Next one just misses. Two and two. Swing and a miss, and he got him. That's his second strikeout. Reds leave one. They're down here five to one. Back here in Cincinnati, we go to the top of the seventh. At the plate for Pittsburgh, Jason Bay. Here's a one-two. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. One out. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what. Pitcher and catcher on the same page now right now. Catcher. Jason Kendall. Here's the speedy catcher. Jason Kendall. Kicks and deals. And another ball. One strike. Two one now. Out to short. Larkin picks it up and two away to start the seven. Now batting the second baseman, Bill Mazeroski. Two outs, base is empty. Next to hit, Bill Mazeroski. The 
wind and a pitch. And there's a ball. The pitch. Slice the other way and foul. The wind of the pitch. This one in the air center field. And that is that. Nothing doing here for Pittsburgh. They're up 5 1. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. Dylan Peters. And he'll work on holding this lead. Dylan Peters. And welcome back. Bottom of the inning and ready to hit now for Cincinnati. Johnny Bench. He is at the top of the game in terms of defense at the catching spot. It's so impressive because these guys have to do so much study and preparation for their pitchers, for opposing hitters, and really their number one job is to guide that staff through a ball game. And so when you also can turn it up offensively and be a force there, that is a win-win, every manager's dream. The pitch. Stays alive. And now the lefty. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Why to kick the pitch? And a swing and a miss, and one gone. Well, I'm not sure what he was waiting on right there. He got the change up and still laid on it. You rarely see that. It almost makes you think that he was trying to set the pitcher up. I mean, if you can't catch up to the off speed stuff, there's no way you're going to touch a fastball. Next for Cincinnati, Adam Dunn. Popped up, foul territory behind the plate. Kendall under it. Snags it for the second out. Good hard fastball up in the zone right there. They look really good coming in, but so hard to get on top of as a hitter. Now at the plate, Joey Votto. He's 0 for 1. Next offering is downstairs. Well, as good as things can be, it can be a tough day at the office, even for the skippers. Seeing the offense just sputter, not able to get anything going. Here comes a pitch. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Stays alive. Left hand batter waits. And down on strikes. That's the third out. Inning over. Nobody left for Cincinnati. They're down 5 1. Welcome back and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Tony Santion. Number he has a four. great slider with Tony. tons of movement. Cynthia. Back here at the ballpark, ready to begin the eighth. Here's the shortstop at the play. Hannes Wagner. This one in the air right field. Naquin puts the squeeze on that one, and there's one down. The third baseman, number 13, 
Key Brian Hayes. Key Brian Hayes, the next pirate to hit. One for two. Kicks and fires. This one smoked out to left and makes the grab. And there's two away. Now batting, right fielder, Roberto Clemente. Two outs, base is empty. Now it's the right fielder, Roberto Clemente. Next one misses, and it's two and one. Action in the pen down there. Ross Detweiler getting ready to go. Hey. Two one pitches in there, and the count is even. And the two two. Fastball almost got him there. Line drive. That's a hit. And that extends the inning. The left fielder of the first. Ralph Kiner, the next pirate to hit. Hey. Next offering is in for a strike. One, two now. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. And the inning is over. So one left for Pittsburgh. They lead this one, though, 5 1. Dwayne Underwood Jr. will take over here. This is his third time out this year. Dwayne Underwood Jr. Bottom of the eighth, Brandon Drury to the plate. Next offering is foul back. And now it's one and two. And now two and two. Two, two down. And down on strikes he goes. Lead off man is out here in the eighth. So digging in, Tyler Naquin, who's Tyler. 0 for two with a pair of strikeouts. The 2 1. Well, they've kept him pretty quiet in this series. Still doesn't have a knock. I know you want to get that first knock out of the way. Maybe more will come, but you got to give some credit to the pitching staff. They've had a great plan against it. Next pitch misses inside, and that's ball three. And a base hit into right. And that's going to kick into the corner. Now he turns and heads for second. Now the tag at second, and he's out, trying for two. The battle number 11. Shortstop, Barry. And stepping in Larkin. is the speedy Barry Larkin. One home run shy of 200 for his career. Strike two. Right-hander kicks deals. The other way. The throw to first. Gets him easily. Ends the inning. Reds down in order. 
They're down here five to one. We're back. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Ross Detweiler. This is his fifth appearance of the year. We go to the ninth. Here's a big power threat, Willie Stargell. Ground ball right side. Tosses to first. And a quick out number one. Good late bite on that slider. Got the hitter out in front. Rolled over on it. Exactly what he was supposed to do. Next is the designated hitter, Dave Parker. The next offering misses. And a count two and one. Activity in the bullpen. Rob Dibble preparing to come on if needed. Sessa getting loose as well. The pitch. That one fouled off. Two and two. Punch out there, two down. Now two outs, space is empty. Jason Bay, Jason. the next pirate to hit. Oh. Next pitch has popped up. And that is that. Two, three, four, set to hit in the bottom of the ninth. It's the Pirates five and the Reds one. Here's a new pitcher from the pen, Will Crow, trying to protect this lead. Number 29, Will Crow. Welcome back. Digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Eric Davis. And a pitch. Straighten him up a little bit. Next pitch has popped up. Hayes moving under this one. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. And there's one down. The batter, number eight, second baseman, Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan, the next to hit for the Reds for the fourth time tonight. And a pitch. Up the middle, and it finds its way through for a hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Good two-strike hitting right there, Boog. A bit of a lost start for now some, back. so that was nicely done baseman. to beat the odds. Really Tell nice me. job staying up the middle with his approach. Oh, he didn't man. try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Here at the bottom of the ninth, one out. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Tony Perez. And the right-hander deals. And that skips in the dirt. And that's in for a strike. Bullpen action for the Pirates. Chris Stratton loosening up in case he's called upon by Derek Shelton.
Crow throws over, and he's back in standing. Morgan stands at first with one out. Swing and a miss. Struck him out, and there's two down. Johnny Bench digs in now, known for his rocket arm behind the plate. This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. Really good athlete, and many times you talk about, you know, the feet of infielders. This catcher as well, really quick feet. He's able to recognize the pitch, see the trajectory, and get into a spot where he can block those balls and keep them from going to the backstop. Three, two. Popped up to the left, into foul ground. Hayes settles underneath it, and he's got it. Ball game. And the Pirates come in here and finish off a three-game sweep. Well, this is a nice sweep. Good way to finish this series. You're heading to another city for another one. Got to maintain the same focus. Whatever you were doing in this city, make sure you're doing the same thing in the next one. Eat the same thing, sleep the same way, get to the ballpark at the same time. 5-1 is how it ends. And the road team picks up the win and picks up a sweep. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon. Here now is our final line score tonight. For the victorious Pirates, five runs, seven hits, no errors. They left two men on base. For the Reds, one run on six hits, no errors. They left five men on base. Time of the ball game, two hours and 46 minutes. Thank you for joining us here this evening. We remind you to please drive home safely. Yeah. <laughs>